Greetings, Joseph Kursky here. Let's add and calculate fields in ArcGIS Online. Very powerful to be able to do this, but you cannot do it inside the map viewer. Before we do that, though, let's set some context. I want to calculate a field called area in square kilometers for a standard deviational ellipse from a set of zebra mussels invasive species. In order to set the context, let's first add the ESRI World Hydro Reference Overlay. I love this because it's scalable. As you zoom in, you see more and more tributaries. And zebra mussels are an aquatic species. They can't hop on railroad tra trains, uh, trains, uh, planes, and automobiles. They've got to travel in boat cavities and in waterways themselves. So that's why we're adding the World Hydro layer. Let's also do something that is very powerful inside ArcGIS Online. You've got all of these analysis capabilities at your fingertips. First of all, to set the context even better, we'll change the base map to terrain with labels as you see me doing. You can see the watersheds. Really, if you focus on Colorado, you really see the... It's a great teaching moment of where those watershed boundaries are related to terrain and how the rivers flow related to terrain. So let's go ahead and add a layer from a URL. I know where the zebra mussels data are because I actually hosted them online. I got them originally from the US Geological Survey. And if you're pasting things, make sure you don't have any extraneous characters, otherwise it won't work. So I'm going to back up to where it says feature service and that is a vector layer point data 1980s ish to 2010 ish zebra mussel sightings. Okay? the US and Canada. Okay, this is looking good. I've got my zebra mussels. I've got the world hydro layer. I've got my base map set appropriately. Let's go ahead and dig into some of the analysis tools, shall we? Let's go ahead and look at a powerful but easy to use tool, and that is filter. Let's go ahead and add an expression. I want to calculate two mean centers and two standard deviational ellipses to capture the movement over space and over time, these zebra mussels. So first, before I do that, I'm going to demonstrate a trace downstream tool. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the filter and filter just on this one zebra mussel sighting that's in Joliet, Illinois, and it is during the month of 9, September. Okay, so let's go ahead and we've got our one zebra mussel location. If we open the table, we would see just one record in that table of zebra mussels because we've got it filtered on just that one point. There it is. Okay, so we know when it was sighted. We know where it is. We can go ahead and, again, open that table and see just that one record and see additional information about it. 1991, it looks like. Latitude, longitude, etc. Okay, very good. We've saved our map. We're inside our organizational account. We're going to run a trace downstream. I can just search for trace, and I find the trace downstream tool. There it is. It says what it's going to do. You've got to have your input layer. In my case, it's the zebra mussels. Okay, so the zebra mussels point layer is going to be my input layer. I'm going to calculate a mean center and a standard deviational ellipse later on, but right now I'm going to trace downstream so it can illustrate the connectivity of these hydro features. Okay, so we can give it some settings here. What are my distances, my max distance that I want to trace? What kind of units should I use? Well, these are all important decisions to make. And also, what's my final output layer name going to be? I'm going to set it at 5,000 miles. You can use kilometers if you want to. From that point, right? I've filtered on just that one zebra mussel. So it's only going to trace from there. Now it says it's failed. Okay, why? This is a good instructional moment. You've got to give it an output name. I didn't give it an output name. You've got to save it somewhere. So you've got to give it a name. You're creating new features. You're creating new information, which is really powerful. But you've got to be able to give it a meaningful name. So, okay, trace downstream, estimate the number of credits. I'm going to give it an output name now and run that trace downstream tool. It's going to trace using the hydro network. GIS is all about spatial relationships. These hydro networks, these where things are in relation to each other are all embedded in the power of GIS behind the scenes. So there's my trace. I'm going to go ahead and symbolize it a little bit differently. I like the thick blue. 
but I'm, I want to make it a little bit brighter and I want to make it a little bit thicker so I can see it a little bit better in relationship to all my other rivers and streams and lakes that I've got in my hydro layer. So I'm going to go ahead and change the style, style options, go ahead and tinker with this. There's no right and wrong in many of these uh, mapping tools. It's what helps you understand something in a richer, better way. That should be the guideline. So I'm going to go ahead and now I've got it quite visible. Now I can see that from that point at Joliet, Illinois, I can go down the Illinois, the Chicago River to the Illinois River, on down the Illinois River to the Mississippi River. Fascinating to be able to do this, and it's just great that you can do this online with no software to install. Ah, oh, it's just fantastic. I can open up the table if I want, my new layer, and see exactly how, how far that zebra mussel would have to travel or any point on that river at Joliet. 1,477 miles, what's that, 2,500 kilometers or so, to get to the ocean, in this case, the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, so we've done some powerful things here. We've traced downstream. We've also used the filter tool. I'm going to go ahead and delete the filter because now I want to run the, the mean center and the standard deviational ellipse for two different time periods. First, I'm going to filter on its less than and I can use the histogram if I want, or I can type in an actual value. I'm going to type in is, le is less than 1995. You can see the distribution of zebra mussels here in this histogram. So you're fostering some mathematical interpretation skills. Less than 1995. Now I can see the distribution there. And it was largely around the Great Lakes and some of the Tennessee River Valley as well, a little bit of the Arkansas River Valley. Okay, I've got 1,753 zebra mussels according to this data set, which is an important phrase to keep in mind. According to this data set, I have that many zebra mussels. Okay, now analysis. Now that we've filtered the data, our zebra mussels, we can type in, is it mean center? How do you know where it is? How do you know what the, the name of the tool is? Well, there are there's an index of tools and you you can search as well as like I'm doing here on terms. Here I want a central feature. It's a mean, I want the mean center and I want the standard deviational ellipse okay so I'm going to go ahead and I can mean center I can do center central feature median center all kinds of different things and you need to know what all of these do but right now I'm going to be focused on the standard deviational ellipse here and I'm going to be able to use that as, as an illustration for how to calculate a field how to calculate a field so that'll be instructive I hope I've calculated what have I've got here I've got 1990 before 1995 notice you've got this little timer here it shows you that the tool is running that's very helpful you don't want to abort these things you want to let these things run but remember you're working online you want to uh, overextend the capabilities of your uh, bandwidth so tread a little bit lightly here but it is powerful to be able to do this online Wonderful. Okay. Now I've got the standard deviational ellipse right there. Fascinating. Okay. And I also have, I think, the, what did I do? The calculated central feature of those. It's not the same as the mean center. That's another discussion. Okay. Now I'm going to filter it again on year is greater than 1994. Remember, I did before 1995, and now I'm going to do greater than 1994. So it's important to know your data so that you can build these expressions appropriately. I don't want to have any overlap between the two different time periods. I want to have them sharply divided into before 1995 and 1995 and thereafter. Okay. In other words, after 1994. So, okay, I can't add a field to give me the area encompassed by that standard deviational ellipse. I cannot do that. Okay, so how do I do that? I can't go into the table and just add field. I have to go into the item for each layer, which I'll illustrate next. So that's the second instructional part of this lesson, really, after the running some of the analysis tools. How do I then calculate a field inside ArcGIS Online? So I've got these, these map layers in here. Look, I've got central feature. And now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the ellipse for 1995 and thereafter in the same way that I did the earlier years. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run that tool. Okay, I've got two standard deviational ellipses. Notice the shape, notice the area. So those ellipses contain one 
spatial standard deviation away from the mean, which I did not calculate actually. I didn't calculate mean center. Those are center features, central features there. But I do have the two standard deviational ellipses. Great. Now, what do I want to do? I want to calculate how big those ellipses are in terms of area. Again, if I go into the table, and I, I can't add a field right here. So I need to go to the actual item name and do it there. I've symbolized my zebra muscles now so I can see that the darker zebra muscles are later and the lighter ones are earlier. So it, the standard deviational ellipses make sense that the red one is later. You can see this sort of west-southwest migration of the zebra muscles in mass over time. Okay, so if I show table, notice I do not have a field for the area that the ellipse takes up. I have a center of it and a standard deviational distance, but I do not have the actual area. So this is where I'm going to save my map, and I'm going to go into the content zone and add a field, and then calculate that. You can't do it inside the map viewer. I think it's partly a... Re the reason is you don't want to be inadvertently messing around with your table in there. Um, just too, too, too many avenues for messing up your whole data set. So you've got to be intentional about it and go into the content zone inside ArcGIS Online. And once you do that, we're going to go into the feature layer. Okay, so super. Now I've got these two feature layers. Each one of them contains two sub layers inside. It has the center feature and the standard deviational ellipse. So you've got to be careful about that when you go into add feature. Make sure you're adding adding a field. Make sure you're adding a field in your correct layer. Okay? So, all right, now that I've updated the sharing, I'm going to go into my first layer and I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, this is my before 1995 standard deviational ellipse. I'm going to go ahead and select ellipse layer and then on the blue stripe, notice I've got a data tab, a data tab. I can go to fields now and add in the upper left, add field. I'm going to give it a suitable name, a display name. The field name can't contain any spaces or odd characters. The display name is what you see when you open the table. So spaces are fine there. I want a double type, which is an in, uh, a floating point. So, okay, I've got the field added as you can see now I've got to calculate it so if I go back into the table there uh, but again in the content item zone so if I click in table right there see I've got area square kilometers and I can look at the settings and so on but if I go to table then I'm going to be able to calculate the field see the new field right there area square kilometers that's the display name and I can go ahead and click on there and calculate there we go calculate I'm going to use an arcade expression to calculate the field. Now here's where you're in the arcade zone. You can add variables, globals, functions, and constants. Don't get too frightened of this zone. You're just basically constructing an expression. In my case, I'm going to use an area function. My area function is going to take the feature, which is my ellipse shape, and it's going to calculate the area in square kilometers. Excellent. So let's let's do that. I'm going to click on feature and build my expression. When I click on feature, I'm going to start my expression and I'm going to go and say area curve paren feature and a comma and the argument that I'm feeding it is I want it in square kilometers. These quotes here have to be straight quotes. They can't be curved quotes. So straight quotes there, and a, cr a closed curve paren. Notice that if you want to get more information, you can look up area, and it says, oh, features, share, okay, unit, and returns a number. So that's the syntax. Then go ahead and say done, and it'll calculate. It's only one record, so it won't take long. 640,000 square kilometers. Let's do the same thing for my standard deviational ellipse after... 1995 and after, again, data, fields, add field, area in square kilometers, give it a display name, add new field, double type. Now, 
It's there. We're going to go ahead and calculate it. Go to Table, Calculate, Arcade, give it that same expression. This square kilometers in quotes here, that has, ex that has to be, notice I forgot the beginning quote. So you can test, you can run a test here and make sure that that's a valid number that comes in there. That square kilometers has to be exactly as it's written. It's very particular, obviously, you're building an expression. Okay, here I've got over a million square kilometers in the post-1995 uh, and thereafter. So let's go ahead and go back to the map and then just, again, I'm always about being critical of the data. Don't just take these numbers and say, okay, check, next. No, go back and test it. How do I test it? If I go back to the map, I can actually trace roughly those ellipses and see if I'm in the right order of magnitude and close to the actual value that it just calculated, just to make sure that these are correct. I'm always about double and triple verification. So, okay, there's my standard deviational ellipse pre and post 1995. Okay, the blue one is 1980s to 1994, and so it said, remember, there was a, um, a value that it calculated there, and what we're going to do is we're going to test that, go to the ellipse layer, and show the table, and let's click on there. There's my 600, and f there's my 1.1 million. That's the second one. So let's go ahead and test those with just the drawing tools. Here's my before 1995, and there's my 640,000 that it just calculated. Okay, so I've got the two values that it calculated, and now I'm going to test it with the just the measure tool in the lower right. So measurement, and make sure you're measuring an area, not a line or a perimeter. So let's go ahead and just roughly, you don't have to be too exact about this. You just want to make sure that those values, remember we're doing metric here, so you just want to make sure those values are, are close so that you know that it calculated correctly. Okay, so I'm tracing around here. Notice I've got just a little bit over 640,000 here drawing it manually. So I'm close to 640,000. Okay. And I can do the same thing with my larger one. Okay, new measurement. Again, area. Let's measure that other ellipse, the 1995 and later. Metric, just over a million. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So I've verified that those numbers are correct. You have to go into the item zone in ArcGIS Online to calculate. First of all, add a new field, then calculate its value. Save my map and that is how you add a field and calculate a field. Now, from this point, I can make an instant app, I can make a story map, and really flesh out and describe what's going on with these zebra mussels, right? It's all about the whys of where. Mapping is a means to a greater goal. A greater goal is to help us understand, hey, we care about invasive species, and here's why, and here's how they're spreading, and what can we do about it now? Thanks for being with me.